All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Sunday school class. On this Memorial Day, as we remember the veterans that gave their lives for our freedom, so we can stand, I can stand here and teach Sunday school. And that we all can be in this house of God and worship. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our dear, most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for, for the lives that was given for our freedom, Lord. We thank you very much for that. And Lord, we just pray that every one of them is in your hands, Lord. Lord, just ask now that this lesson that you gave me will touch each and every heart and soul out there. I ask all it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'll open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 3. We're going to read from the verses 14 to 21. It says, For this cause I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with his might by his spirit, in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Upon him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. So we're looking at the Holy Spirit here. It is the heart of Christianity. It's what keeps us going. And I thank God for it because he brought my daughter from the brinks of, de of death because I had faith in the Holy Spirit that he would do it. The human need in this passage is the desire to be more effective for Christ. Learning goes by the end of the session, each learner should be able to. If, if you were to define Christianity in one sentence, what would it be? Anybody? With the two or three people next to you, come up with a sentence. Okay, that's Even though you did not have a long time to think about it, you came up with some good sentences. Here's my answer. Christianity is the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. The es essence of Christianity is a living person, living in a living person. Christ in me, Christ in you. Christianity is somebody living in somebody. This concept is entirely different from other religion or philosophies of the world. And I know some people are like, well, how can a person live inside of a person? It sounds weird. How can that happen? Well, when you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, his spirit is in you. And Jesus Christ at one point was a person. He still is a person. And he can live inside of you. Judaism is a system of laws and ceremonies. Greek tongue tie there is a system of ideas. Confucianism is a system of moral codes. You know, Confucius say. Uh, you'll find Confucius with mainly with the Oriental. Uh, people. Uh, so they're, they're the ones to be on that. 
Christianity is Christ in you, the Holy Spirit living in your heart. At a business meeting I attended, the speaker was explaining the importance of personal development. I've been to some of those like that. She stressed the value of becoming a whole person. She listed the typical areas of life that most people try to balance. And they still try to do this today. Everybody does, especially now that the, the limits of this mask mandates is being lifted. People are trying to do this now, but instead they're not looking to God about it. They're trying to balance their emotional life, their social life, their physical life, their financial life, family life, business life, spiritual life, and business life. Right now, after people being cooped up for a year and a half, having to go everywhere is wearing a mask, having to do everything while wearing a mask, and now the mask mandate is over with, they're trying to do all of these. When all they gotta do is just turn to Christ. When the lady came up with a spiritual life, she said, I'm not a very religious or spiritual in the traditional sense. I am Jewish, but I only go to temple once a year to renew my vows. I don't think that it's important that you attend a program on a special place every week. I think what is important is that you have it in your heart and my philosophy is just treat people fair. Then a little later in the meeting she said, it never made sense to me why anyone would convert from Judaism to Christianity. All we have is the rules of the Old Testament, but Christians have both the rules and the Old Test in the, of the Old Testament and the rules of the New Testament, double the rules. Frankly, many people view Christianity like any other religion. It's a building you go to. It's a program you attend. It's a list of promises you make and a series of rules that you keep. But that's not true. You come to church to fellowship with one another. You come to church to praise God and pray to God. Yes, this is a building, but the real church is right here. That's true, that's true. You do feel the spirit. But we all come together to feel that. We all come together to hear God's word. So, yes, there are laws in the Old Testament, over 600 of them. And like Dr. Cash said on many t occasions about those, is when we woke up this morning, we done broke about a half a dozen of them. So, it's, yes, it's a building, but we come together in the building. It's a program, yeah, we follow a program. So it'd be organized. But we also that program is God led. You know, I don't believe that people realize how much uh, some people don't get any encouragement, smiles, or conversation mm -hmm. during the week. And you know, they can bite everybody hard with stressful things. Oh yeah. That's true, that's true. Uh, in verse 16, it said, Christ will strengthen you through his spirit in your inner being. This is the third time in three chapters that Paul had made this reference to the Holy Spirit living in the believer because Paul really believed it. And... Uh, Ephesians 1.13, 1, he said, 
you are marked with a seal, the promise, Holy Spirit, who is God, deposit that guarantees our future inheritance. And in chapter 2, verse 22, he goes, you are a dwelling in which God li lives by his spirit. So once you get saved, he's in you all the time, living in you. And you come to a building, a church building, to hear more about God because it feeds your soul. When the Bible says God lives in you, Christ lives in you, the Holy Spirit lives in you, it's the same thing. Because, you know, it's the, the Holy Trinity right there. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All three are living in you. The Holy Spirit pres present presence in you and in me is the very heart of Christianity. It is impossible to overstate the importance of this concept. He's in all of us. He loves each and every one of us. He loves the sinners that are outside right now. He loves each and every one of them. But we as Christians, when we get saved, we're born again. We're new babes once we do that. And we grow in Christ. And those people out there who are sinning, they look at us, how happy we are, because we know where we're going, how we can show love for just about anything. And they're like, hmm, I wonder what he's got that I ain't got. What I got that you ain't got is the love of Jesus Christ. But eventually they're going to say, well, let me follow him and see if I can get what he's got. So that happens. God will do that. He will use you to touch somebody else. Now, the situation with my daughter, she was in critical condition. And my niece, who never really spoke much about Christianity or God or anything like that, was telling me how much she has prayed for Nikki. And I honestly believe that God used my daughter to touch her. And there's a lot of other people down there she has touched by doing so. I mean, even... One of her fellow officers had her situation put on the news down there in Atlanta. And asked, and this is coming from the news people now, and asked everybody to pray for her. Even got it in the news. So God was touching a lot of people in Atlanta by doing that. And we as Christians, he will use us to touch them by our actions. In verse 14, it says, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and earth derives its name. Out of his glory, riches he will strengthen through his spirit in your inner bearing, bearing being. I'm all talking tired today. I must not have had enough coffee. Christianity is the Holy Spirit fulfillment. It will fill you with so much love. I mean, before I was saved, uh, there was a song done by Loretta Lynn that actually described me when I, before I got saved. And the title of the song was, I'm the only hell my mama ever raised. Because I was pretty wild. I see your head nodding back here, Kayla. 
But a lot of people out there are still doing the same thing I did. It's nothing new. They think it's new, but it's not new because it's been going on for generations, for many, many years. But when you get saved, when you have that Christianity come into you, you change everything. I was in the drugs. I was an alcoholic. And when I got saved, all of that got put aside. Just like that. In verse 17, Christ's intention is to become so at home that he indwells, fills, and transforms your, inter your entire personality. We've seen a lot of people do that when they get saved. Their entire personality, the, the way they live, the way they do things, totally changed. And from what I hear about some of the stunts that Dr. Cash has done, that's probably a good thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hmm. In verse 17, we're, we are rooted and established in Christ's love. He is our anchor. Torrance used to sing a song about the anchor. And the anchor he was singing about was Jesus Christ. And I love that song too. In verse 18, we grasp how wide, long, high, and deep is the love of Christ and the personality, personally experience this love. Each one of us, when we get saved and we have the Christianity come to us, in us, we understand the depths of it, the length of it, the height of it. We understand it all, how much he loves us. I mean, he hung on the cross for our sins. He died for our sins. There used to be a uh, song sung by, by a choir somewhere that said, that sung the song, Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. And here's one of the verses. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me, all his wonderful passions and purity. O oh, thou, thou spirit divine, all my nature refine, till the beauty of Jesus is seen in me. And we got to live like that. When we leave here, we're showing God's love when we walk out that door. We're showing God's love when we come in here with each other. Because when you hurt, God hurts. And that's when he sends people to comfort you. Now, a few days ago, I was walking around here like I had 10 tons of boulders on my shoulders because of my worry for my daughter. But then the church came together and prayed over me for my daughter. And then Thursday night when I got the word, she had opened her eyes and responded and actually FaceTimed with a friend of hers that felt like a, a, a huge weight came off of my shoulders. Amen. Because God answered our prayers. That's right. And he does that all the time. We've had a young lady in here who had a brain tumor. They were ready to do surgery on her. We called her up here. We prayed over her. And she went back to the doctor, and the doctor done another scan and couldn't find it nowhere. Because God healed her. Being a Christian doesn't mean just coming in here, sitting in church, listen to a sermon, a few songs, and then leaving. It's fellowshipping with each other, showing each one love. It's much more than just 
a, a, a show to put on. I know this one time, I uh, heard this one story where this family came to church for the first time, and then after church, she asked her son, hey, how do you think the service went? He goes, it's a pretty good show for a quarter. Now, it ain't a show. Although, unfortunately, the way some of these churches are going today, that's all they're doing is putting on a show. They're not preaching against sin. They're not preaching against hatred. The one main thing they're talking about right now in Congress is racial equality. Where at the foot of the cross there is no race. Jesus does not look at your skin color. We should not look at the skin color. We should look at their hearts. We need them to know that we care for them. Not to get out here, shoot up everybody, or rob a place or anything like that. That's not what a Christian does. The only thing a Christian does is, is steal his life back from Satan. That's basically it. God washed us with the blood of Jesus Christ to heal each and every one of us. So we're not here just to put on a show. We're not here to, just to be inside of a building to follow a program. We're here to hear God's word, to pray for one another, and to love one another. We're to love one another as Christ has loved us. And it says that right in the Bible. We are to love one another just as Christ has loved us. So, if you think you're sitting in here just to watch a show, well, guess what? You're going to get a show. Because Jesus Christ is going to show you his love. Yes, we have a lot of talented people in here, but they do it for God. They don't do it for the glory of man. We do it for the glory of God. So just remember, Christianity is your heart and soul. When you go out the doors, carry it with you. Don't put it in the back pocket and bring it out on Wednesday, Sundays and Wednesday nights. That's not Christianity. When you walk out the door, you show the world that God loves you. I was asked one time, um, and my, my niece even said this. Now, this she wasn't too hip on the, the vaccine, but she was asked it too. Same question too. This is ironic. It was the same question I got. Well. Did you get vaccinated? She looked at him and I, I gave the same response. I said, yeah, I got vaccinated by the blood of Jesus Christ. And this is a woman who for a long time, ever since her grandfather passed away, would not talk about church at all. And when her grandfather was alive, Oh yeah, they talked a whole lot about the Bible and the church. But now, I believe that God is using my daughter to bring a lot of people back to him. That's what Christianity is. We bring people to God. And we show it by our love, how big our love is. So when you leave here, carry it with you. Show everybody that what Christianity really is, that it is pure love 
of God. Let us pray. And dear gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for this lesson, Lord. And Lord, I pray that anybody watching on Facebook, YouTube, the radio, or however, that this touches their body, their mind, their soul, and have their lives turned to you, Lord. I ask all that in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>